Hi everyone, welcome back to the best moves in Go history.、Uh, my name is Ryan, and today I'm pleased to introduce、um, professional nine dan player Mokjun Suk, also the head coach of the Korean national team. Mokjun 老师 welcome back to our channel. Hello, Ryan. Hi everyone. Glad to be here again. Today we have something very special for the viewers and a very special topic. Yes, it's about、uh, Go Seigen in Japanese and in Chinese Wu Qingyuan.、Um, he's、uh, I'd like to call him、uh, the saint of Go. So he has done so many things and he left so many things to us. Of course, legend of legend. So. He played、um, some legendary games、uh, during his career, but I'm not going to show you whole whole games today. I'd like to show you a few moments that、um, uh, inspired me the most. So, first of all, yeah,、uh, as you can see on the board,、uh, the new opening. I mean, when he was 19 years old. He and his rival and also good friend Kitani Minoru, they introduced a new openings. So and it shocked whole Go community. Community and、um, uh, before them, almost every players、uh, played three four point, or、um, actually,、uh, especially、uh, Honimbo family, which was very traditional Go. Family, they only played three four point, and、uh, this was、uh, the match against between、uh, Uchingyuan and、uh, Honimbo Shusai, the last Honimbo, and、uh, it was a huge event. And Uchingyuan played three three point and star point and tengen, which was a、uh, taboo <laughs> in in Honimbo family because they never played something like that. They will they would play. Only three four points. So and all of a sudden, nineteen years old boy played something like this, and the shocked whole community. So it was the,、uh, definitely a big、uh, mm-hmm. news in in the world. And、um, after actually, Uchingyuan and Kitani Minoru、uh, played. A lot of new openings. The players, a lot of players, inspired from them. So,、mm-hmm. in, uh, include、uh, San Lense three star、mm-hmm. in a row, and a lot of new openings came out.、Mm-hmm. So,、uh, basically, his philosophy was, you know, in order to enclose the center, you have to you had to spend two moves. I mean, play three four point and enclosure. But his idea was. Play three three point or play star point. So you just、um, take the corner with one move and just go go to side or go to center. So his idea was speed or pace. So not just、um, uh, play something.、Um, I mean, the the philosophy or idea all days was just. Take the corner with two stones, but his idea was just play one stone, play one move, and take the corner and go to somewhere else. So speed or pace it was his idea. And、uh, another his philosophy is you can play anywhere in the board because、mm-hmm. the Japan's go com- community and players their style was so conservative. So they always had to play three four point and and they are care about the shapes. But you know, if you study Wu Qingyuan's games, they he doesn't really really care about shapes. He care about efficiency、mm-hmm. and speed,、mm-hmm. uh, especially. When he、uh, after he became super strong, he has to he had to play against top players with white with with no komi.、Right. So he、uh, had to find a way uh, to uh, play with white. 
So he his game was so speedy and efficient, efficient. So that's the uh, the trait of his game. And so I think those this, two are the are really the the current focus of Go, aren't they? The um, speed and efficiency are most is what most players nowadays they focus on, especially after AI. But yes. Gosegan started this in 1933, which is also which also makes it really phenomenal. Right, and uh, actually, just after you know AlphaGo Master uh, won six game six games in a row in online, I found there are a lot of similarity between AlphaGo Master and Uchingen. So, I asked uh, Rui Naiwei. Uh, the Nindan prof female pro professional player and also student of Uchingen. I asked him, did you find a similarity between AlphaGo and Uchingen? She said, yes, definitely. And mm -hmm. she said she's going to study more about his teacher's game. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, you know, that showed, that explains you know, how uh, how uh, how do I say? Um, he was almost century a century ago. He his idea was so. Yeah. Um, how do I explain that? Um, help me. How, his <laughs> his idea was so uh, close to a, recent AI's idea. Mm -hmm. So he was like way ahead of his time. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So. This was the first expre uh, first um, uh, the game that inspired me, and I'd like to show another games. Okay, um, another game that um, one of my favorite Uchingyes game uh, is uh, played against Hashimoto Taro, another big uh, player in Japan. And in this time, at this time, Uching Yuan played with black. And uh, white just jumped here. And uh, Uching Yuan uh, showed some great Tetsuji here. Played this one. And Hane on, on the, uh, underneath. So that means if you block, you can cut. So leather is good for black. Without that exchange, if you just cut here, the two stone will be captured. But with this honey, white couldn't block it. So white played, just uh, connect. This one is first Tetsuji uh, he showed in this game. But it's not the reason why I picked this game. Um, he showed really good strategy uh, in middle game. That middle game. So here you can see Black already gained some territory, and and uh, there's uh, this cut point, weak point. But now leather is good for white. So at this point, Black played something like oh yeah here Black played. Here to um, ask you a question. I mean, if white plays something like this one, and you can uh, make Aji, or later you can leave uh, in the corner. So white played this one and invade. Seems like you know if. Once leather is good for black, any time black can cut this weak point in the center. So white couldn't attack this group um, intense, intensely, so white just jumped here. And next move, this one. I mean, he's not trying to escape this one stone from white's um, territory. He, he's using it. This one. And... He's 
he just sacrificed this one stone and make his own um, territory in the left uh, lower left corner. So he's just just um, using these stones and uh, make his uh, own uh, influence. So this move and this and this is kind kind of um, uh, he planned everything and uh, the goal of these these moves are not. Uh, reducing white's uh, territory or influence. He's using two stones to make his own uh, territory here. It's and a, It's so different to... from what they look like they're doing. First mm -hmm. of all, it's threatening that there might be a ladder for this top left group, but also he's just strategizing something completely different than what it looks like he's doing. Yes. And uh, in the in actual game, after a few uh, moves, he cut here and jump to, and there's a still weak point, cut point here. And then after, I, let's see, okay, after here, black, uh, white made the eye here and black is attacking this whole group and even though white uh, saved this uh, group left side in the left side black already captured this keystone here and it's black's turn and next move is one of classic um, attacking move that I like so when you think about attacking you know your opponent's group it's easier to play something like, okay, you, you don't have I, 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 I will attack you, something like this. It's, it's common, I mean, yeah. but in the uh, highest level, I mean, in Wu Qingyuan's game, his next move, in, you know, uh, impressed me and is inspired me. Uh, I remember vividly when I saw this move, I probably, I I reviewed this game, I studied this game before I become a professional player, maybe around 10, 11 years old, and I thought, oh, this is a really good idea to attack, uh, you know, your opponent's group. Mm -hmm. So, in Chinese, uh, the old uh, old Chinese said, in Chinese, Xiong Dong Ji Shi means, you know, if you want to attack the West, mm -hmm. you know, make noise. In, mm. the, in the east, something mm -hmm. like that, similar meaning. Right, right, so, right. this is perfect example. You want to attack this group, and you make noise in opposite side. So next move, black played this one, which is, you know, it looks like you're playing um, on in the right side, but your real, real goal is attack this whole group. Mm -hmm. So. You're not attacking like, I'm going to kill you, I'm going to attack you. <laughs> but he's doing like mm -hmm. this. On a and highest level, when you're attacking like this, um, it's more, if, I guess it's more efficient uh, when you follow up two moves in a row. If mm -hmm. you attack it directly and you don't gain anything, then there's no purpose for the attack. But when you attack kind of indirectly, but pressuring another group somewhere else, then you're, you're, you tend to gain more if, you, if your opponent has to protect the group um, and let you play the two moves in a row in this other area. Yes. Um, many times uh, at a high level, especially professional level or you know, even high, higher level, highest level, the goal of attacking is not to kill the group, kill your opponent. Goal, your goal of attacking, attack is gain something and gain enough in other direction. Mm -hmm. So this is perfect example. So he played here and make a war. 
why couldn't uh, keep answering it because and then you know a black could cut either cut or um, doing something like this and if white cuts something like crazy move and mm-hmm. and then now really black can really try to kill this group mm-hmm. so in actual game At this point, White couldn't keep uh, answering it and decided to, you know, uh, make sure that that this white group is safe. And then uh, Hane is huge, so that made um, the upper right corner hole. Um, mm-hmm. He made huge territory uh, in upper right corner and up, upper, upper side. So he already. Um, achieved what he planned, you know. Mm-hmm. He's he didn't he didn't mean to kill this group, but he, his goal was just to make enough territory. Mm-hmm. So um, when I studied his game when I was a boy, this one, this move um, you know, gave me uh, uh, inspired me. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's not because I like to attack uh, your, my opponent's group, and I like to kill the, mm-hmm. uh, my opponent's group, but um, this is, I mean, the highest level of game, and I, I learned a lot, because I always chase the, yeah, my opponent's group by attacking um, directly, but this is a really good strategy to um, attack the attack your opponent and gain mm-hmm. something else. So this is huge lesson, big lesson to me. Yes, and that is for everyone yeah. too. Um, <laughs> also, I think the one, of the one of the biggest mistakes that people make is that when you attack without a purpose, uh, you tend to uh, not gain enough by pressuring your opponent's groups. And yeah, and, and it actually it happens uh, in professional game too. I mean, a lot of a lot of um, uh, even professional players they just attack and, and attack and once your opponent uh, you once you fail the attack you gain nothing you you end up empty-handed. And, there's there's and, a saying I think uh, that my friends like to uh, say to me. Um, it's it's um, if you don't attack a group, it's it's not alive. But if you attack it, it will live in ten points. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> so you shouldn't attack things the wrong way. Yeah, I think this is right. a very inspi- It's very inspirational, and not only mm-hmm. that, it's the fact that um, it's using an attack. Also, that you know the strategy isn't even revealed until ten moves later. I mm-hmm. think that to me is also like how Gosekin really started this. Right, he's his strategy was so high up that nobody knew what he was doing until um, you actually saw, oh, oh no, (laughs) this happened. (laughs) Right, right. So that's why he's legend. That's like a... Okay. Let's look at the next... Okay. Yeah, this is another famous move and great move uh, played by uh, Kose again, Uching Yuan. And Black just jumped here. I mean means um, you have to answer this, which is pretty normal and looks very normal and right move. But at this point, Wu Qingyuan showed his ability, ability to um, look at the whole board. So he first played here, which looks not a um, high level move <laughs> mm-hmm. because, you know, usually teacher you know, told, told you this is not a good move. <laughs> yes, because it helps Black get stronger. Yes, but as I mentioned at first, he doesn't care about the shape. He doesn't care mm-hmm. about the old theory. All he cared about is efficiency and uh, um, 
you know, as long as you can win the game, the shape doesn't matter, the theory doesn't matter, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, you can play basically anywhere in the board, mm -hmm. on the board. So here he played here, and Black chose to connect this side, and uh, White School wasn't cut and have a fight right away. This is not a not a good fight uh, for White. Maybe he could play it this way, but in actual game, the purpose of um, this first move was uh, exchange this one first and uh, play next move here. This is one of historical famous move because White already has war here, so he made some influence. So in order to using them, it's not um, it's not cut and fight. He played here to make sure to expand uh, his um, influence. Mm -hmm. So these two moves are really great because when if Black connects here, you can see Black spent five stones here, and it's not. Efficient. Mm -hmm. uh, it is over concentrated, and when white plays something like here, so you can see white white stones are placed just right and uh, perfect. But mm -hmm. black stones are uh, looks like wasted. I mean, he spent black spent too many stones and gained nothing. So in actual game, like play something like here, uh, there was a trade. But you can see White sacrificed these two stones and uh, made perfect in, uh, influence outside. So this was another example that sh showed his um, ability to, uh, how do I say, ability to look look the whole board and uh, play very um, efficiently. I mean, uh, he doesn't care the shape, he doesn't care the beautiful shape, but he uh, always think about speed and efficiency. So uh, if you are a recreational player and uh, if you want to play uh, creatively, I mean, it's um I recommend highly recommend you know any level any level your no matter your level is beginner or intermediate or high level even professional players you can learn from learn a lot from his game I mean when I play when I was teenager I I studied a lot of his game and and I learned a lot his um idea his Creativity and uh, efficiency, you know, you can l learn a lot of uh, idea from his game. Even if overall his game is much different from nowadays, you know, of course you cannot compare to AI these days, but his idea and his, um, uh, his move, I mean, They're so you can learn a lot, they lot from come out of his nowhere. game. Yeah, they're just, uh, I, they're just, you know, when you see them on the board, it's it's like an art. Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. It's it's like he he created this, um, and mm -hmm. no one ever thought this way before. Yes. But then when you actually see it, it it does on a on a level, it does make sense. Beautiful. And. Um, I'm kind, I was kind of surprised that even, uh, you know, the young professional players uh, these days, I asked them a few years ago, and have you ever studied Wu Qingyuan's game, Ku Seigyuan's game? They said no. Oh. <laughs> I was surprised because <laughs> it could, I couldn't imagine that, you know, in my generation, I couldn't imagine that no one's, you know, you, you, do, you don't study his game. <laughs> Because it's classic and you can learn a lot, but mm -hmm. these days they are just uh, training and studying AI game. <laughs> so, but I highly recommend 
no matter uh, what level you are, even professional players and even high uh, level um, players, you know, go and study his game, and you can learn a lot and you can gain a lot of ideas, new ideas. Yeah, I personally um, learned a lot from his games as well. And one of my favorites is uh, Gosagin's uh, book. Uh, it was called um, 18 of His Most Important Games. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the first game that um, that Mulasha showed us was on there. And then uh, uh, many, well, there, there were many others. And um, right. when, I was, when I was studying, I didn't have a teacher most of the time. Mm -hmm. And I think his ideas are, all, are also what I found to be really, really interesting. And I think it's part of the reason why I was so hooked in, in the, into playing Go was because it, oh. like, it just felt so interesting. Like he, was, he would just see, like show all these new and different ways in this, in this game. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And even, you know, I'm saying, uh, I'm telling you uh, his game, even that even make me study his game again. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe I, I start, you know, analyze his game or study his game again after today. <laughs> yes, I think I think I will do that too. I think I'll dig up some of his games. Actually, I haven't looked at mo uh, many of his games um, because they were older, and um, I've only looked at it through the commentaries of his book when I was really young. So n now that we're looking at this now, I feel like yeah, I should uh, go and study some of his games. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Let's move on to the next next game. Okay. This is the last um, game I want to show you today. Uh, it's uh, the, this is the game uh, Kosei game played against Takagawa, another legend of the Go in Japan. So, yeah, it was a huge Shoseki here, and uh, Black played Hane. So, what's um, your um, opinion? What what are you going to play next move? First instinct is definitely. Uh, extend. Uh, yeah, that doesn't of course. seem like it can be Atari. <laughs> yes, this is. I think this is the. This is the move then, that, ninety nine percent out of, one hundred, <laughs> would would think. I mean, this is, maybe maybe this is um right move pro proper move for everybody. But. He didn't play. I mean, White was watching in. Again, he played this instead of extend. I mean, it's hard to imagine that, especially in in Japan. I mean, I guess no Jap player in that um, generation would think uh, cut and uh, make uh, black Atari this one because it's hard to imagine. You know, your shape it become become super ugly. But as I mentioned, you, you know. He never cares about cared about the shapes or or you have to you have to play that way this way. He never thought about that. You 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 you, you know. He thought you know I can play anywhere on the board in order to win the game. It doesn't matter. So this cut is good example. You know. So black played here. Atari. And it started to become a, a fight. And at this point, Black could could have uh, played something like Atari and uh, something like this. But you know, actually, his opponent and Takagawa has very how do I say calm and peaceful style. So he liked to play very slowly, and and he doesn't want to fight. He just play very calm. So, in actual game, he connected here, and White played here, and you can see uh, White is quite uh, speedy, and uh, uh, White already gained this push and this one. So. Uh, the right side has settled, mm -hmm. and the uh, lower side is already safe enough. 
So next move, black plate here means if you save this four stone like this or oh, or or this, you would honey and yeah something like this. Of course, you can white could. Uh, choose this way but what um, surprised me at the time I, when I showed when I uh, started this game he sacrificed the four stone here in the center it's key point key stones I mean I can't imagine and I you know I couldn't imagine that you know um, sacrifice this four stone because it looks so important I mean uh when black plays here you cannot escape from mm -hmm. black because atari and atari you can't mm -hmm. escape mm -hmm. so what white did was just okay i'll give you four stone but it's only eight points mm -hmm. you know i already gained i already settled right side and I, I already uh, spent two moves uh, on the bottom and I even get the sente and played here. So this game, I'm not saying that these moves are um, correct yes. move or mm -hmm. maybe the AI will give them a bad scores, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying it was like eye opener to me. You can play this way. I mean, I, I never mm -hmm. thought about that way. I mean, you sacrifice four stones and play so speedy. Uh, the so flexibility this, here is amazing. Yeah, like as you said, the sacrifice of the four stones, which are vital stones at this time. Yes, um, it's it's no, amazing, and I think no one has to think of, think about that way. Yeah, and yeah. oh. I show you one one more one more move. Next move, black invade here means if uh, white plays something here, black can this and this. So because he has black has uh, thickness and wall here, black could attack these white groups again. Mm -hmm. So if white answers here. Black could do something like this uh, to using this uh, thickness. Mm -hmm. So what white played here was also another example that Wu Qingyuan, Kosei again, he didn't really care about the shapes. So he played this one and then this, exchanged this. And usually we, we would think this is a bad exchange for white because it made black stone stronger. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to even um, imagine, hard to even uh, have this idea. But his goal was just uh, strengthen, make sure this um, one stone is uh, strong. So I told you that if white play just here, black will do something like here or this one, try to attack this one stone. But mm -hmm. with this exchange, Black can't do something like this one anymore. Mm -hmm. So he, his idea was just um, new to me. I mean, it's, it was like eye opener. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot. Not, um, I mean, it's it. Maybe it's not a perfect move or perfect uh, strategy, but you can play anywhere on the board. You can play um, without conservative um, theory. So uh, that was um, big. Uh, that there was the most um, uh, thing that impressed me and inspired me. So this game is a great example that you can, um, sometimes you can sacrifice vital stones, keystones, and 
play a uh, very speedy and with pace. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I learned a lot from his, his game. Mm -hmm. Gosegan created many things, and um, Ulasha today we appreciated this exact part, which is the ideas that he gave us. And those mm -hmm. ideas we can even see in many current professional games, for, and all the good moves that we talked about. And they're in some way using these new ideas that Gosegan taught us. Truly amazing. So that's all we have for today's episode. Um, thanks to Mulasha for sharing these inspirational moments. And if you look carefully in current professional games, you'll see many of these ideas um, also being carried out by top professional players. So it doesn't matter that they're not the best moves. And that's why when we review with AI, you know, it doesn't matter what the best move is. It's if you have the creativity, if you have the idea in your mind when you play that move, that's more important. So what are you waiting for? Go ahead and look, go to your game archives and uh, study some of the second's games. I will. <laughs> <laughs> so we must. <laughs> thank you so much, Mulasher, and thank you all for watching the video, and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye.